Social security will be cut regardless of what politicians do, says esteemed libertarian Veronique de Rougy. We'll get into that here in just a second. But first, though, I want to see what Ru- Veronique was saying about COVID. Because we can put these two together, and I'll show you the insanity of the modern left libertarians, or the modern right libertarians, I don't even care what you call it, the modern libertarian movement, and how insane and silly this is. So let's dive into it. Veronique and her type are the free thinkers, the deep thinkers on the left or the libertarian right. So here she is, April 2020, the monumental failure of the CDC. She's basically, look, she'll see even said, oh my goodness, in 2017, Michael Osterholm, huh? He warned us. He, he told us, and the CDC did not do anything. Why didn't we listen to Michael Osterholm? Huh. I wonder if Veronique wants to walk this back because we know that Michael Osterholm is an ass clown. Yes, he is. He was on the Joe Rogan show, and he scared the living bejesus out of so many people, and he's a clown. And Joe Rogan's a clown. And Veronique Desrouge following this guy is a clown, too. He told us from the University of Minnesota, oh, never heard anything of false science coming from the University of Minnesota, have we? But Veronique didn't want to do the research. She just wanted to say the CDC, that government agency is supposed to protect us. They didn't do it. We need to allocate more money to the CDC so they can spend it wiser. All right. So remember this in the context of what she's going to say about Social Security. Because if it doesn't take you off, you're wrong. A month later, she's going to say, don't blame globalism for COVID-19. So let's take a look why she says that. Because globalism allows us for biotech companies to develop a vaccine against a new malady while others are testing their current available antiviral treatments to see if they can ameliorate the symptoms of infected people. Moderna developed his vaccine against COVID in just 42 days. The company's already delivered the vaccine to the NIH for human trials whose results should be known by the end of the year. Bailey also reported on a potential game changer in less than three months in this fight against the virus. Yes, so basically what these guys are saying, look, the globalism is saving us from the ineptitude of the CDC (laughs) because the CDC didn't listen to the Michael Osterholm clowns of the world in 2017 saying, we're sitting in a, this is the fakeness of it. I just wanted the Mercatus Center mandate back. So they indict the whole Mercatus Center at George Mason, but they basically say, uh, examining peers before and after the FDA issued EUAs, my analysis finds that the FDA's regulations enacted before the COVID-19 pandemic strongly restricted clinician and patient access to COVID-19 testing Remdesivir treatment and va- approving vaccines. So that, again, not an indictment on the Mercatus, Mercatus as a whole, but the fact that reporting that, yeah, you get it. Maybe one of these days I'll do a, a deep dive into Mercatus Center, Reason Magazine, all the various Libert- Cato Institute, AEI, Libertarian Think Tanks, and see where they stood on the uh, the Vax mandates. All right, so remember, this is the basis of why I'm building this sc- uh, screech against the uh, Veronica de Rougies in the world out there. They're, they wanted. They want more money for various government agencies that they approve of. Yet they're going to scare you to bejesus out of you in this right here. Social Security and Medicare will be a cuts are coming, whether or not politicians do something about it or not. And I'm just going to read you the the fallacy of all this, and I'm going to show you why it's such a fallacy, dude. All right, so Sniffy Joe, but whatever. Okay, I have an idea. Uh, let's see right here. It's important for people to grasp reality because no single issue will affect our fiscal future more than Social Security and Medicare. Along with Medicaid, these programs are the drivers of our current and future debt. Again, going back to, did Veronica, Veronique de Rougy say anything about $100 billion to Ukraine? And there's going to be a guy on here who says, we didn't spend $100 billion, we spent $45 billion. Yeah, we gave them assistance in actual dollars in the equivalent of $100 billion, dude. So we gave them cash of $45 billion. We gave them assistance and other things that equate, equate to $100 billion, which is inherently $100 billion that aren't going to fund Social Security. Well, I don't get the excuse making, man. I thought the left was anti-big government or anti-government. Apparently not anymore. And to drive home the serious of our predicament, we note that Medicare and Social Security together face a shortfall of $116 trillion over the next 30 years. Uh, what? Okay. Where? Where is this? Where is this cited? Where is this study? Where is the evidence? This is just Ravron E. pulling it out of her butt and saying it. Just because she writes it doesn't make it true. I want to be able to see the document for which he gets this claim. Was it Larry Kotlikoff or Ron Eek? Was it Larry Kotlikoff? I bet it was. Oh, my goodness. You think we just fell out of the crib yesterday, Veronique? 
So let's show you. Scott Lakoff, while the U.S. official debt is 20 trillion, the fiscal gap is really 10 times larger, 200 trillion. That comes from adding in off the book liabilities, including debt that's in the Federal Reserve's hands. All right. Well, I don't. Where? 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 I mean, what, let's. I mean, let's see that. Let's cite that. I mean, I, I don't disagree with that inherently. I just, <laughs> if it's true, it ain't getting paid off. We all know we're not paying off now. In fact, the CBO just issued a thing that said there's going to be we're going to add another 19 trillion to debt over the next decade. The debt's never being paid off, dudes. It's just all there is to it. It's going to keep accumulating until the the, the empire collapses. I mean, this there's no two ways around that. So to point at Medicare and Social Security and say, we're going to cut your benefits because the debt is so freaking idiotic. And I just, again, I mean, Larry Kolokoff, I liked him. I interviewed him. I got no qualms. He's a big impact on my financial planning career when he wrote the book, Spend Till the End, with, with uh, Green Scott Burns. When I say green, because uh, Scott Burns, we're all going to die of climate change, guy. It's silly. According to the Boston University economics professor, the U.S. is currently facing $200 trillion in unfunded liabilities. All right. Uh, and again, that may or may not be true, but if you think that we're going to pay that off, you're nuts. We're not paying it off. We're not paying it off. But anyway, I still don't see any evidence that she just pulls out of her hair $116 trillion. Where is that? She doesn't give us a link here. That drives me crazy. All right. Uh, then she goes down here something else here, too. The average Social Security retiree, retiree will get about $700,000 in benefits, but they've only paid $625,000 in taxes. Huh? See, where, again, where is this? Because I certainly am not paying $625,000 in taxes. I pay a hell of a lot less than that. Just look at my statement, Veronique. You're not, where, where is this? Where, where is she getting this stuff from? The average social, so think about it. Your old buddy, Josh. Let's just say my PIA is 3500 bucks a month. I'm just, I'm not going to add for inflation. We're just going to say 3500 bucks a month times 12. That's 42000 a year. Let's say I draw Social Security for 20 years. I'm going to get $840,000 of Social Security money. How much did money did I put into it? I didn't put anywhere near 500,000. I'll tell you that right now. I could just look at my social security statement, man. I, I, so where is this coming from? Man? You can't just write stuff and not freaking cite it. This is rookie crap. It's so, I, so let me tell you something. A long time ago, I went to the, uh, Ameri was it used to call the IHS, the Institute for Humane Studies, which later on became, if memory serves, the Mer Mercatus Center. They had a two-week program at American University in 1994 and 1995. I still got my, uh, my yearbook. And be, one of these days, I'll go through to see if any of those guys in my uh, – there's like 300 of us, man, from all over the world. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. You got to meet lots of freaking crushing people. They're all wanting to be government jobs or economists. I mean, it's okay. But anyway, it'd be interesting to see if any of those guys became big wigs in the, uh, the modern libertarian uh, you know, think tanks. Anyway, I'm not – Anyway, so the, I, I'm not foreign to the ideas of what Mercatus Institute or the IHS, and I don't even think that. Something happened with the IHS where they have some kind of controversy. I don't know. I don't follow it anymore. But it'd be interesting to see. So I'm not ignorant about the, the basis of Reason Magazine, of the IHS, Mercatus, the K. I'm not at all. I'm actually, and this is what ticks me off more than anything, because these are my guys. These are my guys. And when they write nonsense words, they need to be held accountable. I expect this from Noam Chomsky. I do, and Scott Burns and Larry Kolokoff. I expect that because they aren't our guys, dude. And I like Larry Kolokoff, but, you know, at the end of the day, he's a big lib. And big libs don't follow the same rules in terms of being able to use uh, deep thinking writing. You see what I'm saying? Big libs don't follow that because they got no rules. They can do whatever the hell they want as long as it makes them feel good. For us, on the other hand, we have to have, we can't just be emotionally driven. We have to use reason, thus, Reason Magazine. So where is the reason? I mean, this is just, this is make-believe stuff, dude. I, and I, how, do, what, how else do I know? How else can I validate this? That explains the program's insolvency. Everyone knows Social Security is a Ponzi scheme. No one denies that. No one denies that I am going to pay less in tax than the benefit I receive. No one denies that. But just throwing numbers out there, this is crazy. All right, so let's see. Well, so while no serious reformer seeks to cut a dime... Uh, workers, retirees upset about the changes won't have any le legal rebuttal no matter how many put taxes they put in because the Social Security said so in a ruling in 1960. Uh, the Supreme Court said so. They said, you don't have any exposure. This is not your money. Okay. Wow. Oh, my goodness. The same Supreme Court said three-fifths. Same Supreme Court said, all I mean, all this stuff's nuts, man. Uh, 
All right, consider again Social Security. Right now, benefits paid out come from the payroll tax as well as money borrowed by the Treasury. Why does the Treasury do that? Because Social Security has a trust on a $2.6 trillion in IOUs to get redeemed when the payroll tax doesn't cover the benefits, which will be in about 2035. Those IOUs come from excess payroll tax collected from past employees. That's 100% right. The money was exchanged for Treasury bonds, pieces of paper. Okay. Uh, Treasury then spent these funds on whatever Congress directed. All right, whatever. So anyway, I want to show you something else here. Uh, for Unless Congress changes the law, and as long as a trust fund contains IOUs, Social Security will ask the Treasury for money and get it. When the trust fund runs out of IOUs, 2035 now, Social Security benefits by law will be cut by one-fifth. And that's where you change the law. This is not rocket science, Veronique. It's going to happen with Medicare only sooner. All right, again, um, but that, that was it. I said, oh. Okay, so what, what, what? that's it. <laughs> she has pulled a bunch of stuff out of her butt and put it on the paper and said, this is this is God's spoken word in the good book. What the hell, Veronique? Anyway, so I, I put a couple comments in here because it's so freaking frustrating. Find them. I, it's just, I, it's, it's so the idea that there's big benefits cutting from Social Security being written by same people who say COVID wasn't, uh, CDC, big government didn't do enough, the FDA isn't doing enough, and Moderna and Pfizer and the globalists will be the solution to all of our problems makes me very, very skeptical. Let's just put it that way. And it should make you very skeptical too. When you hear these nuts out there saying, Social Security is running for bankruptcy, it's true, 100%. Bankruptcy just means there's not enough assets or income to pay off the debts. That's bankruptcy, all right? Fix it. I'll go with my next video. I'm going to show you how we fix this. This is easy. Anyway, if you're going to cite crap stuff, at least have, if you're going to use crap numbers, at least cite where you got this from so people can research it. Yeah, rookie league. All right, see ya.